Easy Variety on FoodWise tonight. Continuing with organic farming for a few paragraphs here before I talk about two articles. Organic certification continues to be the subject of controversy. Among its present weaknesses, my favorite irony is that of wild salmon. Born in a mountain stream and maturing somewhere out in the Pacific Ocean, it cannot be labeled organic because nobody, the fishers who caught them, the market selling them, can prove that they were raised without pesticides, chemical additives, or in accordance with the other criteria. But here's the main thing about organic certification from a food-wise perspective. Organic does not necessarily build farm communities or promote integrated, reduced external input farming. Many large organic farms actually look an awful lot like their non-organic megascale counterparts. In later sections, I talk about small-scale integrated farms that often are tied into their communities, in contrast to very large-scale or mega farms. So, some growers reject certified organic production, choosing to be beyond organic by doing more than is required. Remember the purpose to conserve biodiversity that was included in the USDA organic definition? Well, it turns out that doesn't necessarily mean a multi-species farm in which the cow manure fertilizes the corn and chickens keep the bugs at bay. Organic farms can be big and some raise monoculture crops. Companies that dominate the organic food market sell organic berries or vegetable produce nationwide and year round coming from many farms located in several states and even in other countries like Mexico, Canada, Chile, and Argentina. The organic produce you buy at your local supermarket probably was not grown by a small family operation, tending each crop using farm-generated fertility, such as manure, to maintain soil fertility. Most likely, it wasn't grown by a woman owner-operator or a person of color either. But women and workers of color dominate our farm labor scene. Access to land and other agricultural resources is a huge barrier in all kinds of farming, including organic. The low price margins that mega organic farms can thrive on make competition stiff for other farmers. I discuss the efficiency advantages of large scale farms in a later section. The bottom line is money. And this comes up time and time again, and it's a theme in virtually all the articles that I've been talking about in this series so far. So we turn to money again tonight, looking at higher education. What's going to happen to higher education in the fall? Will our classes be face-to-face, -face, face, or will they be online? Will that be the platform that we're using? Again, it is for this summer. And those colleges that are on the that are on the semester system will begin classes in August, at the end of August. At least that's what the schedule is now. So decisions must be made fairly soon. Now there is a report. There are some reports that colleges and universities some are going to wait until July to make their decision, and that could be. But what's coming up now on the regional, the state, the federal, international scale of policy ana analysis and governance is when are we going to get back to where we were? I'm not sure we're ever going to get back to where we were. And so I present two articles. One is saying, Yes, colleges and universities are going to open in the fall. They must. Their very identity is built on and built with and based on face-to-face -face contact, social interaction. Many colleges and universities with high price tags prize themselves on that social interaction. Certainly those with lower price tags do as well. And I've already spoken about regional universities, such as the one that I teach at, Western Washington University. So 
that would be, I guess, colleges must figure out how to continue in the face of threats. That is a hallmark of resilience. But then a second article um, in the Atlantic uh, says, no, colleges are not going to be able to safely hold classes like they did. There is no way that is going to happen. And the author talks about uh, challenges there. So what a controversy, but there's a lot at stake. Fiscal solvency, medical emergency. And I include a quote from one of those articles for you in the introduction to this video.